We want to help people help other people. And what we know for sure is that we can't help as many people as we could if we don't know our numbers. Like the way to, for us to help more people is for us to run good businesses. Hello, and welcome to Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast. This podcast is dedicated to chiropractors who are in the seasons of launching and building their practice. Join myself, Dr. Lona, and my co-host, Dr. Bobby, as we have conversations each week as it relates to building the practice of your dreams. And remember, you can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. We are here to lead you on the way. All right, you guys, I am back here and I'm not Bobby introducing us today. So this is Dr. Lona and we are back on the Build Your Remarkable podcast. And Dr. Bobby is having his remarkable life on vacation this week. And I have the ability then to bring in one of our great friends and another TRP coach, Dr. Chris Greer, who many of you have seen at um, our immersions and we'll be seeing here in Minneapolis pretty quickly at one of our intensives. But I'm excited to open up the floor for Dr. Chris today because he is going to get into the heart of some of the things that really help us see into our practices, whether you're in the beginning of building a practice or you're a seasoned CEO, you are looking at your metrics. So welcome, Dr. Chris. Why don't you enlighten us on some of the metrics that are your favorite to look at? Thank you. Uh, and appreciate the introduction. Love working with the Remarkable Practice tribe, you know, and people who are looking from the outside in, hoping to build their businesses. Because as we say, like our mission is to help restore health. Like our, to, we want to help people help other people. And what we know for sure is that we can't help as many people as we could if we don't know our numbers. Like the way to, for us to help more people is for us to run good businesses. And that's what Remarkable Practice is, the Remarkable Practice is all about. You know, we are all about like helping docs build businesses instead of just have jobs where they serve some people. Chiropractic has a lot of work to do. We know the results that we can get. And man, I tell you, when we do it right, when we run businesses, instead of just hope that people come in the door and hope that we're doing okay with it and basically run our businesses all on emotion. When we run our businesses on metrics and save our emotions for caring for our people, the sky's the limit then. Mm, and I love so, what you just said there. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that's that's the thing. And so many practices, I mean, we see it all the time as coaches. You know, it, we get to start with people. And when we say, all right, what are your numbers? Very few people actually know. Very few people actually know. And of course, there, there are dozens. There's a couple dozen really, really important metrics to know. And just to you know, assuage your emotions right now, I'm not going over them all right now in this podcast. I'm not going over a couple of dozen. But I want to touch on the four one, the four that I think are most important, and then the one that everything leads to. And that one that everything leads to is net momentum. Um, I'm going to define all of these things for us because, again, we I think we need a standard language in the profession about what we're really talking about with our metrics. And yeah, that's good. net momentum is is giving us the idea of whether your practice is growing, whether it's stagnant or whether it's shrinking. And because all of our metrics ultimately lead to net momentum. I'm going to talk about net momentum at the back end of the podcast here. <laughs> and, and Chris, I just want to interject for a second. So if you're listening to the podcast and you're like, I don't want to know my numbers. I like to just see my people because I've met many chiropractors that say things like that, right? Okay. Well, somehow in your mind, just like we can get goofed up about money in our mind is like that somehow your statistics make you good, bad, otherwise you know, just know that it's just a facet that helps you better understand what's happening in your practice. And if you're not the person that loves numbers, you better hire someone who does that can help you see it. So let's yes. just get that like excuse off the table that somehow you don't have to be someone who looks at them. Maybe you don't have to be the one that's getting all the numbers. Always. You can hire someone that does that, but you need, especially as the owner operator or the CEO, the numbers are going to be a critical piece of you being able to take your mission further. So yes, yeah, hundred percent. This is a worthy conversation, no matter where you're at in practice and one that we need to just meet it head on with. Fantastic. And Dr. Lona, you're so good at acknowledging and like real recognizing where people are coming from too. And there is, there's that facet of like, I don't want to be the numbers person. I don't want to be doing this for the numbers. 
And you're right. What we what all of us want to be doing this for are the outcomes that we're going to get for the people that we serve. And who wouldn't want to serve more people to see more outcomes in our community? I think everybody would say, yes, I would love to serve more people to have more outcomes in the community. And lots of times the drawback to that is like, but I don't want it all on my shoulders. Man, I'm already working as hard as I possibly can. Well, that's the thing. Let's free it up off of the owner operator to start leveraging other people and other systems so that that same mission, that same big heart that that owner operator has gets to be drawn out through a system and, and a team that allows us to scale and see more people and have those outcomes. So- Okay. Thank you for acknowledging that. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so when we start looking at our metrics, really, like I say, I'm going to cover on four things. And we talk about systems, internal systems that are attraction, conversion, and retention. I'm not going to talk about attraction numbers today because, and that can, might be an odd thing, like what? Is this, doesn't everybody need new patients that we need to, well, new patient is it, honestly, it's pretty simple. It's like, how many new patients are you having and where are they coming from? You just have to know those, those things. So let's move down the line one to conversion. And in conversion, we need to like, the primary metric in conversion is conversion percentage. Well, how do you get conversion percentage? You take how many people came into your office and you and how many people started and you just create a metric from that you divide the number of people who started by the total number who came in for day one and that's your conversion percentage well, let's let's just pause this for a second because i know some of you are probably like wait what and so it's like <laughs> you identify on your schedule a new patient almost every single person i know has a new patient process right yep. you can start that conversion percentage based on like how many new patients were scheduled versus showed that begins the process, right? So that might yeah. be 90%, that might be 95%, that might be 75%. And depending on where they came from, they may have a different, like if a digital lead, maybe not as qualified as an internal lead, right? Then of those people that showed, how many of them showed for whether you call it a report of findings, a day two, you know, whatever you're calling it, there's a percentage off of that, Right. That's what Chris yep. is offering us. And then likely in your in your system, once you've offered the report of findings to them, whether that's happening on day two, there's a process where they say, yes, I would like to do that. I would like to pay for that. And I would like to get started, right? Wherever that happens in your process is another percentage. And for us in TRP, we say day three is where we know they've started. They've began their journey of becoming a client that's accessing care or a patient that's actually accessing care. Yes, absolutely. So Thanks for the clarification and let's clean it up even further. When a person walks through your door, there's a process that you go to that gets to a point where you get to say, would you like to start care here in the way that I've recommended it? And they get to say yes, or they get to say no. And the people who say yes are your conversions mm -hmm. and the people who, who say no are not. So let's say you have 20 people and in a, in a month, 20 new people that get your recommendations, 15 of them say yes, five of them say no. So 15 divided by 20, you've got a 75% conversion rate, okay? That's your total conversion. Now, I do wanna take it one step farther because in order to inform our attraction, we need to know our conversion percentage on people who were internally generated, people who were externally generated and people who are digitally generated. So I'm not going to get into the weeds on attraction, but you ought to have streams of new patients coming from systems and uh, processes within your office. Those are internal new patients from you doing attraction events out in the community. Those are external things. Those are events that's, uh, you know, your traditional media uh, your sign on the road, on your door, all of that so that's external. And then digital, the stuff that you're doing online from your website to your social media. And we want to have that, a conversion percentage for each of those things. Now, it's pretty simple if you're marking them on your schedule as to whether they were coming from internal, external, or digital. So uh, anyway, there, there are systems to do that, but Task somebody in your office, if you don't love the numbers, task somebody in your office to know where they're coming from and whether they've said yes or not. So that's conversion percentage. That's the first of the four metrics that I'm going to talk through. You got to know your conversion percentages. And then everybody who says yes becomes what we call an active patient. 
So the second metric is a metric that I that is called total active patients. Okay. An active patient is defined as a person who is coming, following the doctor's recommendations, is scheduled ahead, and is paying you. So those three things, people always say, yeah, but how about, how about the person that does this, that, or the other thing? How about this one? How about this one? And I'm like, are they following your recommendations? Are they scheduled ahead? And are they paying you? Those are the three things that makes a total active patient. So, or makes an active patient. And then you've got a group of those people and that's your number. That's your total active patient number. And so gathering this, I find to be a big sticking point with offices mm -hmm. because they've got this big old list of patients. And lots of times we're telling stories about our patients like, oh, no, they're still coming in actively. Absolutely. You know, I think that person. Oh, yeah. But when, <laughs> no, no. We just need to look at that entire list and we need to say that person's on the schedule. That person's on the schedule. That person. Nope, nope. This person's not on the schedule. They haven't been in for a while. We need to first off, create our list of total active patients. It's a single number. It's like 300 or 150 or 500, you know, whatever your office size is, know your number of active people. These are individuals coming in for care who are following your recommendations, scheduled ahead and paying you. Okay. So that's the second metric that I think people fall down on. Uh, and Dr. Lone, anything to add on that one or should, we just, should I just cruise to the third? Uh no, I love, I love that. And that I had never heard defined before the remarkable practice, even to look at that number. Uh, it was more relational just to like, if they had totally stopped coming in, clearly they are not active, but the definition is more from my brain. Like if you're thinking, I have no idea how to start to look at this in my practice, you, you need to make your own definition. So on some level, you may just borrow what Chris just offered you and that it's great. Right. But if, for me, it was like, how are we going to put our hands around this? And we needed to use a digital, our digital system. So we used our EHR and track stat that could just grab it, grab that information. And anyone that had been in, in a certain quantity of time is a tap, is there a total active patient, right? So we define it as someone who has a scheduled appointment within 60 days. Now we are never giving recommendations larger than 30, but I give it 60 days because there is a possibility that like they've gone on vacation and they miss and they're going to go five weeks instead of four weeks. So 30 days wasn't quite. So we, we just defined it as 30 as 60 days in our office. I'm not telling you that that's right or wrong, but the definition is how you're going to set a measuring stick to know if you're growing or you're, or you're not growing. Right. So yep. essentially you set your own definition and that's your yardstick. Yep. That's great. And uh, you know, yes, each office, as long as you have a definition that your office is, working on, then you're going to be successful with it. If you have a wishy-washy definition or no definition at all, right. then you have a major problem. My hesitancy with offices that that use like TrackStat or BlueIQ or, you know, those sorts of things, which they're great services. TrackStat's a great success partner of ours. The issue with just creating a unique patients who have been through the door is that it does include new patients and some of those new patients might not have started. So that's just a metric that we're going to need. And you might have to massage your total active patient number a little bit for that. So anyone who's like, oh, yeah, I've got that number of unique patients who came through the door. There is a caveat to, to that with new patients who came in in the last 60 days who didn't start. So, yep. And just for the record, it does show you uh, uh, like inactives also. So you can get that as who has not scheduled. So there is a way to get that number. But yes, you need nice. to know where to get those things. Yes. Very good. So. Total active patients, know your conversion percentage. And then for those who say yes and who continue with care, they're your total active patients. So if we're talking about, you know, let's, let's, we're just building our statistical database. We, we ultimately are creating practices that we want to be retention based. I think that's important for me to point out here. When I talk about metrics, I'm talking about them through the lens of uh, lifetime family wellness care is really what the remarkable practice aims at. If that resonates with you as a doc, it, you, the remarkable practice might be a place for you to, you know, like a home for you to learn how to create systems to help more people. And so lifetime family wellness care means retention. Lifetime family wellness care is a retention idea. And so we're making recommendations that we want people to stick with. So when we want people to stick with recommendations, we have metrics that are called stick rates, okay? Mm -hmm. And so in an initial care plan that we're recommending for a person, we are going to recommend a certain amount of care for them that typically has a beginning 
and an end as far as time is concerned. You know, okay, I'm going to recommend four months of corrective chiropractic care for you. That would be an initial intensive care phase. At the end of that initial phase is the metric I'm working to next which is our R4 stick rate. So we call it the internal vernacular. And I know R4 might not mean anything to anybody listening to this yet, but what we mean by that, it's the fourth report you're going to give with a person. And that means it's the report at the end of their initial visit or in, 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 end of their initial care plan, where they're going to get to say yes or no to the next set of recommendations that you're making. So initial care goes from A to B. B is where we get to make recommendations for the next set. When they have that conversation where we're saying, this is what you've experienced over this care. These are your goals. Here's what I think we need to do to keep you moving towards those goals. Do you want to do that? That report, we want to know how many people get there. Mm -hmm. In other words, how many people say yes initially that get to that report? That's your R4 stick rate. So again, let's say you start 20 people. And 15 people at the end of your initial care are still with you in care to have that report. That's a 75% stick rate. Now, that's lower than the remarkable standard of 80%, but we want to know that number. So please start taking that number. How many people are actually making it there? And this can be shocking. I just had a, a conversation last week with an office where you know, the typical is like, oh, once people start, they stay. It's absolutely, you know, once once they start, they stay. And out of 100 people who start, the remarkable standard would be around 60 to 70 of them are still with you 16 months after they start. The office actually did the metrics and counted every person and their percent at 16 months was 8%. And they were like, oh my gosh, almost nobody stays. And people, we can't have the impact that we want to have if nobody stays around. So you have to know the number. So as you're getting started, know your R4 stick rate. That's the third of the four metrics I want to talk about. So get those retention numbers down. They typically are the ones that just fly out the window because we think once people start, they're always going to stay. But we we need we know different and we need to know better. What do you got, Dr. Lona? Well, and, and think of it as like you're just doing your due diligence of helping people best matriculate through the journey, which we know all of us get adjusted routinely because we are all... Um, hopefully walking our talk, right? So if you're not, this is your your nudge to like, you better be getting consistently adjusted because this is what you're asking people to do. And at the same time, like, are we doing our due diligence to follow up, have our reevals? So also if you're listening and not having proper progress reports and reevals to help engage and know, like, are we hitting the goals and what are their new goals? And, you know, what does that look like for this person? And, and do we need to fine tune any parts of their care like that's just good doctoring, right? So whether you call it a reval, a progress report, a re-exam, I'm not here to like change all your vernacular in this moment. It's just know that you also want to be tracking your people to figure out where are they falling off? Because likely you have a leaky bucket somewhere or we'd all have thousand a week practices, right? Um, and so when we're trying to train our team then, which Bobby and I just did a, a, a podcast on how important role-playing is and training it's like seeing into these metrics help us figure out where our team needs more attention to make sure that what we're delivering is congruent with what we say we're delivering. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's keep cranking because now we're running businesses, right? So businesses need to collect money from the visits that we're seeing. And we need to have a business system, a business model set up that is profitable. Because if we don't, then we're not going to be around to provide the service for people. And the reality is we have an exchange of value that happens in any business. People find something valuable, so they pay money to receive that value. We have to understand and acknowledge the value that we're delivering, which is enormous for people, especially when we're, when we're doing it right and we have a great experience and we're getting great outcomes for people. The value we're delivering is enormous. Let's not undercut ourselves, but lots of times what I find is people don't even know really what they're what they're generating. And so the metric I'm going for here is called collection visit average. Okay. And it's super simple. Let's you just take a number, the number of patient visits you've seen in a given time. Let's say you saw a thousand people in a month, like easy, easy uh, math. And you divide that by the money that you've collected. I'm sorry, you divide the money by the number of people that you've seen. So 
if if you collected thirty thousand dollars in a month and you saw a thousand people, well, now you have a thirty dollar dollar visit average or collection visit average. And what you'll find is that it probably costs you more to deliver the care than that. And that's where oftentimes the business model falls apart. So you want to have a good, solid collection visit average. And people always say, well, what is a good, solid collection visit average? We want to have that thing at a minimum in the mid 40s. Just so you like it, it, regionally, it changes a little bit. But since that question will come up in the in the minds of listeners, that's where we're at. Mid 40s uh, and up. Some offices and techniques have way higher than that. And unfortunately, I've dealt with offices all the way down to $26 a visit, $27 a visit, basically giving visits away. And that's a, that we are out of balance in our exchange of value. We can't have that. So that's collection visit average. So make sure you're getting your conversion percentages. You're collecting people through uh, total active patients. You're seeing if they stay well, through that initial care, at least of an R4 stick rate. Uh, an initial care stick rate, and you know how much they're paying you per visit, so you can start to budget and, and create systems around that. And all of those things lead to, ultimately, your net momentum. So here's this metric that tells us whether we're growing, whether we're stagnant, or whether we're shrinking. And it's very, very simple. It is how many people are new to the practice, this is a monthly metric, by the way, look at it in a month. How many people started care? This is new patients and reactivations. How many people started care minus how many people stopped care equals your net momentum. Now this of course presupposes that you're keeping track of how many people started. Most offices do that pretty well. And you're being very honest about who stopped care. You need systems around this and you need to be honest about who stopped care. Again, if they stopped care, they're no longer following your recommendations, they're no longer scheduled ahead, and they aren't paying you. Like these are the people who have stopped care. So how many people started minus how many people stopped? That's your net momentum. Really strong growth is around 10 a month, 10 and above. Meager growth is like three. If you're at zero, you're not growing at all. And if you're below that, you're going to see your patient visits per month drop. It's a really, really important metric to know. So net so momentum, the culmination of all of that. Yes. And, you know, for those of you listening, especially if you're newer in practice and maybe you don't have solid systems in place, keeping track of your metrics, go back, re-listen to this, pause it, try and go get some of these numbers. And if you are really confused, like schedule a call with one of us, we'll try and help you understand a, a little more about why you need numbers and how that's going to help in the trajectory of your business. Like Chris said, we're not, you know, we can't serve people if we don't have a solid business. And that's just part of, if you're an owner operator or a CEO, you've got to know your numbers. And then he touched on also how you took the total amount of money collected in a certain given time divided by the total number of visits to get the per visit collection. Um, also do that with your overhead, the total overhead in a given point of time divided by um, the number of visits to know what it costs you to see someone that can be a cold, uh, a cold bath as well, <laughs> where you realize, yeah, I need to raise my fees or I need to make some different changes here. Um, and that's, you know, again, just most of us are bleeding hearts for chiropractic in some ways where we just serve and serve and serve. Um, but you know, we really want to be able to serve for years and solidly build a team around this. So these numbers that he just gifted us with are so critical to be able to do that. So Thank Absolutely. you for your time, Chris. Thanks for giving us. You're welcome. Us and I'll just say them. to the listeners, I love that recommendation of Dr. Lona. Go back, listen to it. I laid this out so that you can actually calculate it yourself. And Dr. Lona gave you a bonus sixth metric that's called expense <laughs> visit average. Your collection visit average has to be higher than your expense visit average or you're yes. not making money. So awesome. Thanks, Dr. Lona, for having me on today. That was great. Uh, thank you, guys. And if you like the show, share it with your friends that also need to be keeping metrics in their practices. So and we'll see you guys next time when Bobby's back from vacation. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like the podcast, please subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, please click the links in the show notes to schedule a call.